Hey everybody, what's up? Startup Survival here, and uh, I think it's time for a 2015 knife collection update. I used to love watching uh, these videos. Uh, you get a lot of ideas of what uh, knives are popular and what people are into, uh, and I think it says a lot about the person, uh, what their tastes are as a, as a knife person by watching the collection video, because you see what they spent their money on, right? So, uh, let's get into it. I think the way I'm going to do this is sort of by manufacturer and I'll try to point out what's changed since the last time. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna forget what I've sold so I mean if you're really that interested to see what I got rid of you can go back and watch 2014 video and, and compare. Uh, so yeah anyways let's get on with it. So Cold Steel Medium Voyager. Um, this is a cool little knife. Uh, I bought it because um, I like the large Voyager so much um, and my feelings haven't really translated to the to the medium. Uh, the reason is because um, the large Voyager is obviously a different kind of knife and I actually use this in the kitchen most of the time now uh, to like cut up my steaks or whatever I'm eating because um, it's too big for me to carry sort of uh, EDC. It's still an amazing knife. If I was going to go like backpacking or I mean putting this in a bug out bag or something would be awesome. But um, the medium here uh, is obviously more EDCable, uh, but I just don't like the handle as much because it, I, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you kind of run out of room here. It's got this like weird little uh, sort of finger grooves there, uh, and it forces your hand into that little area, and I just feel kind of crammed. Um, also, it's not as light as like a Delica or an Endura, um, but it's still a cool little knife. Like if I had never had any of those knives before, uh, I would probably love it, you know? So anyways, those are the Voyagers. Um, next, let's talk about my other cold steels. They are, of course, the American Lawman and the Recon 1. Um, I haven't completed the set by buying the AK-47 because uh, I honestly feel like I have enough cold steels right now. I, I don't feel like they're collectible. Uh, I wanted to try something and I think they're great knives. They're, they're really cool. Uh, but I haven't bought any more since then, nor do I intend to. Um, the American Lawman was a gift. Um, I actually bought the Recon 1 first. Um, and it's just what I was into at that time. It's a pretty huge, uh, you know, sort of scary looking tactical knife. Um, and it, it, it goes in my bug out bag right now, actually. So um, I think that's sort of its true calling is for sort of emergency defensive use slash survival because it's got that strong triad lock in there. Uh, but it's not an EDC knife at all. Way too big for me to carry, especially uh, in the office where I work these days. Like, uh, I wear a suit, and if you carry something like that in the suit, it's going to be smacking around in your pocket. It's it's uncomfortable. Um, the American Lawman was a gift. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's a really, like, nice design and stuff like that. It's sort of a more uh, reasonable version of the Recon. Uh, this was a gift uh, for Christmas, I think, uh, over a year ago. Probably, you know, 14 months ago or whatever. Uh, I haven't carried it that much, to be honest. Um, I do appreciate it as a knife. I think it's a good design. It's a great knife. Um, I don't know. It just uh, didn't connect with me as much as some other knives do, I guess. Uh, and same thing. It's like a little bit heavy, so I don't carry it that much these days. Um, okay, next, uh, let me show you other companies uh, that I don't have. Maybe, maybe I only have like one knife or whatever from them. Uh, this is the Rat One. Uh, you know, I think it's a cool knife for sure. I had this before. Uh, this was a gift to me, uh, I think for Christmas this year from a friend. And uh, I had the Rat one uh, back in the day. It was one of the first knives I ever bought, actually. Uh, a, a black one, and uh, it was partially serrated. So I like the knife, like overall. I think it's a great design. I just didn't like the partially serrated. Um, this one, as you can see, has, I think it's a Coyote tan handle. Um, what I have an issue with the, with this knife is the blade centering. Uh, I just can't get it right. Uh, you know, like I play around with the pivot. Uh, I think I've Loctited this one. I'm not sure, honestly. But uh, yeah, the blade centering is not super great on it. But it, it's a great knife. And for the price, uh, you know, everybody knows about the Rat One. It's it's a good knife. Uh, okay, so next, uh, this is the uh, CRKT Drifter. Uh, I don't like this knife at all. I've had it for like, uh, I don't know, two years or three years now. I have carried it maybe like once or twice when I first got it. Um, you know, it's tip down carry, uh, it's stainless steel frame lock, so it's heavy. Uh, it was, I think, the first frame lock I ever got, maybe something like that, but um, yeah, it didn't really inspire me to buy a lot of other frame locks. So, um, anyways, I don't like this knife. Uh, there's a G10 version that I think would probably be better, but anyways, I just never carry it. There it is. Um, what else? Okay, here's the uh, Sog Flash 1. Uh, it was another knife that was kind of like an experiment. Uh, I honestly don't think it's like a horrible knife at all. 
uh, but just SOG is not my company. It's it's not what I dig, I guess. Um, you know, it's it's super light, obviously. It's got a good blade steel in it. Uh, the pocket clip is good. Uh, but I, I just find it feels kind of cheap. And uh, I don't know. I've got a review on it if you're really that curious to see my thoughts. But it just doesn't do it for me, I guess. But uh, I don't hate it enough to sell it. I guess there might be a time when I'll consider carrying it. But who knows when that will be, right? Uh, okay, so what else? Um, this is the uh, Open L number seven. Uh, I actually just bought that today, believe it or not. Uh, I, I told in my channel update, I said I'm still buying knives, so there's the proof. Um, I had an Open L number eight before uh, in the carbon steel, which which this is also. Uh, and at that time, I just wasn't into it. Um, I guess I was more into knives like the Recon one, you know, tactical stuff with uh, you know interesting blade steels or you know whatever uh, different locking mechanisms so the sort of classical knife um, didn't really appeal to me at that time so I gave it away to a friend um, and I certainly don't regret doing that because I think it's it's cool to give knives away and stuff but uh, I kind of regretted it I, I wanted to try it again uh, and I've thought about it over time uh, this is a number seven uh, so it's slightly smaller than the number eight um, super light to carry you know and uh, it's got the carbon steel blade which will sort of uh, develop a patina over time. I think I think it's interesting. I think and it's so cheap too. It's like fifteen dollars. So, anyways, I got that today. Uh, what else? What else? I think that might be it for companies that are not named Benchmade or Spiderco. So, let's get into those. Uh, I like. Um, yeah, let's do Spiderco now. Why not? Why not? Okay. So, let's go from sort of cheap to expensive. So this is the uh, Spiderco Persistence. Uh, I use this in the kitchen a lot as well, actually. Um, it's a good little knife. It's a bit smaller than the Tenacious, but it weighs fairly similar to the Tenacious, I think. Um, I kind of miss the Tenacious, to be honest with you. Uh, I gave it to my wife, and it's down in Mexico right now. It'll be uh, rejoining the rest of the collection uh, soon, I, ver I hope. Uh, but anyways, it's a cool little knife. I like that broad blade. I've always liked the way Spydercos look. Um, and it's a good knife. A liner lock, you know, pretty cool. So uh, that is the persistence. Next, let's talk about the Bird Car Car 2. I've had this knife, uh, this particular knife, for probably a year and a half now, two years. Uh, I had another one before that. It was one of two knives that I took with me to Mexico when I moved there for six months. Uh, and I, uh, the other one was the Tenacious, and I ended up preferring this knife. It's absolutely one of my all time favorite knives. Uh, you know, it's made in China, so what, right? Um, you know, the blade steel is the same as the uh, Persistence, uh, similar to Aus 8, I guess, you know, uh, not that different. Uh, lock back, um, you know, super smooth, actually. Uh, easy to sharpen, great pocket clip. It's basically like a, a poor man's Endura, right? Uh, but I, I love this knife. I think it's awesome. Uh, I have never bought any more birds. Uh, who knows, maybe I will one day, but I uh, haven't done it yet. Okay. Um... What else? Uh, let's talk about the Endura, okay? Uh, so I've got one Endura. This is in the blue color, uh, you know, VG10. Great knife. Uh, I've carried this a whole bunch since I bought it. Um, it's really lightweight, and it's got a long blade on it, so I, I think it's a pretty cool knife. I want to buy more Enduras, and uh, I'll show you my Delicas now as sort of a segue into that. Um, you know, I've got two Delicas, uh, one in green, one in brown. The uh, the Delica is one of my favorite knives for sure, uh, and I bought the green one first. Uh, it, I think it was my second or third knife I ever bought uh, after the Tenacious, and I had a really bad experiment with a CRKT knife, but that doesn't count. Uh, Tenacious was my official first knife. Uh, Delica was, I think, my second. Basically, I've been in love with Spyderco ever since, uh, and I just think the Delica is the perfect knife. I've got several videos about that, so I'm not going to uh, rant about that now, uh, but yeah. Delicas are awesome, man. Okay, uh, now I also have the Dragonfly. Um, I think it just kind of completes the family of the Endura, the Delica, Dragonfly, you know? Uh, there's also the Stretch, which, which is sort of like a weird cousin because the blade shape is different, but who knows? I, I would really love to buy the Stretch, but I just can't really justify spending, you know, $100 right now on another Me Too knife, you know? Like, I've got already a, a whole bunch of knives that are similar to that. Um, the Dragonfly, I think, competes pretty nicely with the uh, with the Sog Flash 1. Uh, I personally think the Dragonfly is a much better knife. Uh, it's not assisted, and, and therefore it's not going to 
have a broken assist mechanism on it. Um, the blade's a little broader. Uh, I kind of like that. Uh, it, to me, it's just a bit more ergonomic and, and well designed. So uh, I like the Dragonfly. The issue, though, uh, that nobody ever says about these bright knives is uh, everybody's going to see it in your pocket. Like it's going to be sticking out, and it's not going to be camouflaged the way that like a black knife will. Uh, you know, mind you, the clip here is a bit uh, a bit more you know evident or whatever. But like. Uh, yeah, these sort of brightly colored knives, they do stick out and therefore, like if I'm in the office or something like that, I don't feel super comfortable carrying that because it's going to draw attention to the knife and frankly, I don't want to talk about it. Um, it's a tool that I have on my person. There's nothing illegal about it, but I've gotten into a number of discussions over the years with people about knives and, oh, why are you carrying one? And it's like, I don't want to have that talk anymore. Uh, people are generally accepting of it, but like, um, you know, let's just not go there if we don't have to kind of thing. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about uh, the Spyderco Sages. Now let's get into the really, really cool stuff uh, from the Spyderco family that I have. Sage 1, Sage 2, and I just bought this uh, last week, Sage 3. Um, I think they're all like really, really cool knives, um, and I got them exactly in the order that I showed them to you. Uh, Sage 1, I got it. Uh, back in Ontario when I uh, went back for a visit probably like three years ago uh, and it's in perfect condition uh, you know this is an S30V blade carbon fiber you know liner lock uh, but it's one of the smoothest knives I own like you're able to do the the middle flick effortlessly it's it's so easy um, and you know I've never had any problems with this knife I've taken it apart put it back together the blade centering is still really good uh, you know, it's it's a great knife, and this is a knife that I do actually carry fairly often. Um, it's easy to wear in like suit pants, you know, like it's light enough to you know to carry easily. It's got a great pocket clip. It's classy looking. Like if you're wearing a suit, um, you want to carry a knife that sort of goes along with that, right? So uh, Sage One is great for that. Uh, Sage Two. Uh, was obviously the second knife I bought in the Sage series. It's also super smooth. Uh, you know, it was my first titanium frame lock. Uh, I'm not going to say it's inspiring me to go out and buy a whole bunch more because uh, that can get expensive pretty damn quick. Um, but for, I think I paid 160 for this. I got it on sale at my knife store. Uh, I think that's a really good deal and it's such a cool knife. Um, it pretty much fills the same role as the Sage 1. I can throw it in the suit pants um, and I feel pretty classy when I, when I carry that. Uh, and also, where is it? Let me show you one more thing. So I actually bought a, uh, a fairly nice watch in my estimation. This is a Citizen EcoDrive uh, and it's got the titanium bracelet on it. Uh, so yeah, sometimes I go dual titanium with these two items and uh, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, I feel pretty awesome when I wear those two things. Uh, the, the watch has become like an EDC. The Sage kind of goes in and out um, with a couple other knives I wear to work. Uh, Sage 3. Uh, just got it, so I'm still kind of forming impressions about it. I honestly don't think I'm going to keep this knife uh, long term. I kind of just wanted it because I found it on sale uh, for like 130 or 140 or something like that, uh, with tax maybe 150, which is not bad, I would say, in Canadian dollars, especially considering what's happening to the Canadian dollar right now. Um, but it's been discontinued. That's the reason why I bought it. Uh, if you don't get it now, you might never find it. And then you got to go to the secondary market if you really want it, and uh, that can get expensive. So uh, I'm actually going to sell this knife at some point, uh, and I hope to get back more than what I paid for it. Um, I think if I just wait a little while, um, it's going to become super collectible. I think it was the least popular sort of member of the Sage series. I think way more people went for either Sage 1 or Sage 2. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a cool knife as well. Um, the thing that nobody really points out about it that I've heard anyways is that the handle is like way thicker on this or wider, let's say, than the, uh, than the other ones. Like the Sage 1 and Sage 2 are similar size, but the blade shape is different, like the tang and everything, and the handle is bigger. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it there or not, but it is bigger, so it feels different in the hand than the other Sages. But um, cool knife, you know. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to carry it. I think I might just kind of like leave it in box or kind of play with it at home. Uh, I've got enough other knives as you can see to carry, uh, but yeah, uh, at some point I'll probably sell that knife. Um, okay, now last three knives from Spyderco, uh, Paramilitary 2. Uh, the black one, black on black, was my first one. I got it as a gift from somebody for my birthday. Uh, the uh, camo with the satin blade was the second one I got. Uh, I also got that as a gift for the next birthday after that, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. 
And then the um, the third one I have here is a sprint run uh, with the uh, Coyote handle or whatever it's called, uh, brown handle, and the S35VN uh, uh, blade steel. Uh, and I got that for my own birthday uh, last year. Uh, same thing with the Sage 3. Um, it's, it's a sprint run effectively now, uh, quote unquote. Uh, so I think that that's the kind of thing that may go up in value over time. Uh, I'm not going to carry that one either. It's only for sort of playing with or, or what have you. Maybe one day I'll just decide, oh, screw it. You know, like I'm just going to keep all my knives and never sell any of them. Uh, but for now, it's, it was kind of just an experiment. I love the paramilitary too. Um, this costed 175 or 179 or whatever compared to maybe 130, 140 for a regular one. I thought, hey, why not throw down the extra 30 bucks or whatever uh, and get yourself a sprint run knife uh, that you know you could have forever if you wanted to. Anyways, that's that. Um, three more knives to go, and they are all bench mates. So uh, I'm going to show you these in the order that I bought them. Uh, this is the Griptilian, the the full size grip. Uh, you know. Love that knife. Uh, what I will say about it is I don't carry it that much, uh, to be honest with you. I think it's a great knife, but as you can see, I have tons of options. Uh, same thing with that bright orange color like the Dragonfly. Um, it stands out, so I can't carry it to work, which is where I am, you know, 50 hours a week at least. Um, so maybe I'll carry this on a weekend, uh, and I do throw it in there occasionally. Um, you know, I, I love the Axis lock. I like the 154CM. Pocket clip is good, you know, the handle I think is pretty decent as well. What I've noticed about this blade though over time is that the handle is way lighter than the blade. So it's very like, the balance is off on this knife. It just feels kind of weird. Um, and and I'll, co I'll contrast that by showing you the, uh, by showing you the mini grip, which I think is actually a better knife. Uh, I got this recently, uh, black blade with the uh, OD handles. Uh, they're both 154CM by the way. Um, and uh, I kind of like the mini grip a little better to be honest with you. Uh, for one, the handle color is uh, subdued enough that I can carry it in my suit pocket uh, and it won't be noticed as easily as that bright orange. Uh, also I just think the balance is better and uh, I don't know if you guys can see uh, but the checkering here is different. It's like a tighter grain on the mini grip and it's kind of a looser grain on the full size grip. I kind of like that tighter grain uh, a little better to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, black blade is cool. Black with uh, OD, come on. Um, that's a really nice knife. I, I hesitated to buy that for so long. I even uh, went and did my review of the uh, Delica versus the uh, Cold Steel Mini uh, Medium Voyager, and I really, really would have liked to have this knife when I did that video um, because I think it's a good competitor to those two knives, uh, but it was just too expensive. Anyways, I got a great deal on it off Craigslist, $80. Uh, keep your eyes open. Sometimes you'll find like really, really good deals. Uh, so, one more knife to go, and uh, I didn't know I was going to save it to, to last, but uh, I did, and it is the uh, Benchmade Osborne, and it actually has um, some grease on it, because I used it today at lunch at a restaurant I went to. It was a, a Jewish, like, uh, deli, and I bought a, or I, for lunch I got a latka and a uh, chicken matzo ball soup. Uh, and they didn't give me a knife to cut the latka, so I just uh, whipped out the Osborne uh, 940 and uh, cut it. Uh, this is a great knife, you know. Uh, I think it's the most expensive folder I've ever bought. Uh, like, this is a $200 knife where I am. Uh, you know, some people say, oh, I got it for 130 whatever. It's like, good for you, man, but uh, here's what it costs where I am. Uh, 200 bucks. Um, you know, S30V, I, I love the blade shape. Uh, I love the handle. I think it's just an elegant design overall. Uh, what I will say is it's not like the sharpest knife that I own. I just find that without, repro re without reprofiling this knife, which I personally don't have the skill to do at this time, um, I, I think that the relief edge is a, a little just too steep. Uh, I would like it to be wider, sort of like an Endura or, or you know, Spyderco knives in general have great edges. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sharp enough. Uh, it's a good blade steel, all that stuff. Um, what I like about it is it's so thin and like easy to carry. I've got a review on it, so I mean, I'm not going to talk too long about it, but I actually wear this in my suit pant pocket to work. Uh, so the knives that I carry the most these days, I'd say, are obviously the 940, Sage 1, Sage 2. Uh, I'll throw the mini grip in there from time to time. On weekends, my go-to is usually uh, one, of the, uh, one of the paramilitary 2s. I, I throw in the Endura and the Griptilian sort of equally, I would say. Um, and yeah, I mean, I pretty much never carry a cold steel unless I'm just, you know, feeling different that day. Uh, I'm glad that I have them and stuff, but, uh, 
yeah, anyways, that is the collection as it stands. Uh, I don't know how many knives there are. Uh, I'm guessing there's probably like 20 or something here. You can count them if you want. Um, and I've sold knives too. The, the thing is that the collection's always changing. Uh, there's probably some knives that I would never sell. Uh, like, I mean, I love the Delicas. All my Spydercos pretty much that I have, uh, I love. I would want to give them up. They all serve a purpose. The Cold Steels, you know, I'm really happy I have them, but they don't, you know, really excite me that much these days. I think they're good knives. Um, the Benchmades, I love the ones that I have. Uh, I'm not sure there's much more out there from Benchmade that I would like to have, but you can sort of detect a theme here to my collection. It's like, I have some Cold Steel, I got some Benchmades, I got a lot of Spider Co's, and then I've got a few random things that I've experimented with, um, but that's pretty much the direction things are going. I sold off all the Kershaws, uh, I got rid of the a few, a few Sogs that I had, or I blew them up. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else I had, but, uh, that's pretty much what I've settled on. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching.